First of all, thank you to our panelists for joining us. I'm just uh, briefly going to uh, have you introduce yourselves. Uh, just just uh, your name and where you where you work, and uh, just a very short because we're up against a little time. Hi everyone, my name is Suda Bala. I'm from SAP, and you're probably wondering what the heck is SAP doing here. Um, I'm actually uh, here to sort of talk about how we use market research um, to improve our products, as well as how we help our customers uh, in the process. Hi, I'm Paul Colchin on Nielsen, and been in the mobile world for over five years in a variety of capacities, a lot of consumer behavioral stuff, work with a lot of device companies, um, kind of bridging tech and behavior, grew up in the agency brand world. Uh, hi, I'm Michael Mace. I've been in the tech industry for decades. I'm uh, the head mobile guy at usertesting.com, and we do uh, testing of mobile applications and websites. And I'm Sharon Nitter, and you guys heard my story yesterday. So the only thing I'll say is I have a brand new puppy. I can't wait to get home till. So. <laughs> and if you want a if you want a photo, just go Sharon to SharonNitter.com. I'll send it to you. <laughs> um, so we're we're here talking about the challenges and barriers and opportunities for mobile. We've been hearing a lot about it over the past few days. Um, there's there's no prepared script on this. We, they did send some questions in. And a lot of the questions I think we've already heard about, uh, a lot of those have been answered. But I want to just sort of toss up a, a, uh, a thought, and that is um, when you think about in particular research for clients, research, doing research for clients using mobile, um, I, I have a feeling that it's a myth. I have a feeling we're all here saying that it's, it's, everyone's doing it. And I'm wondering if, if you guys have, have experienced anyone coming to you saying, I don't do it, I don't know what I'm doing. And, and I have no idea how to do it. Is, is, this, is it a myth? Is it reality? Are we all immersed fully yet, or where are we? That's the question. Michael, you had a really good point in one of your emails, if you'll address that. Yeah, OK. So, uh, and, and by the way, so since we're doing testing of, of mobile apps and websites, everybody that we talk to is doing it. But the striking thing is how many people are doing it but don't know what they're doing. And, and I don't mean that in a, in a mean way. It's just that the, the understanding of mobile uh, is, is really held back in a lot of cases by assumptions that people have based on the way things used to work on the web. Mm -hmm. And they don't understand that mobile is completely different. So, so one of the misconceptions is just not understanding that there's a different set of rules here and that if you follow the old rules for what made web stuff successful, you'll actually do something that really stinks in mobile. Uh, the, the second thing that's interesting is we keep using the term mobile. Um, but it actually doesn't doesn't mean anything, you know. It's it's a series of things. It's smartphones and it's tablets and it's different platforms on the smartphones. And each of those have very very different behaviors and different rules of success. And it's going to get worse as we get more of these mobile devices. And so you need to be a lot more specific about what exactly it is that you're looking to accomplish and what you're looking to test it on because each of them has a different set of rules. And if you just just try to do one thing for everything, it it doesn't work. It, it's kind of like the, the segmentation, if you said the market for motor-driven vehicles, and you tried to make a generalization about that, and, and that would be obviously crazy. What you want to say is the market for SUVs or the market for airplanes or the market for trains or boats or something like that. But when we say mobile, we're doing the same equivalent thing. Excellent. You know, I also think, so you'd only wish your clients really cared how you got the data as much as you care. <laughs> I said it. I mean, the fact of the matter is, in a large, in many companies, um, they, they really want you to get the data the best way you can, right? So if you have a millennial group that's never going to answer a telephone because, God forbid, they, and this is my niece and nephew, you, they don't like to talk on the phone, um, you're going to lose that sample. So, you know, I, th I think a lot of it has to do with it, it's not as bright and shiny for a lot of companies, because they've been dealing with it for a long time, they've been dealing with mobile since you know, really for quite some time now. So it's really about the best way to get that data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I actually see the mobile research kind of in the same boat that mobile advertising was, and that was this whole sense of consumers are way far ahead in terms of it. And I've always advised going, consumers already do it, they live their life on it, you kind of got to catch up to them. And I think there's a lot of scrutiny. It just in general is you got to reflect the reality of what 
people do and how they're using devices and where they intersect in their life. And to be current, you got to be there. It's a lot more challenging because mobile has some technology issues, recruitment issues, all those kind of things are, are big challenges to solve. But I always feel like advertisers are actually trailing um, where the consumers are at when the mobile discussion comes up. Mm -hmm. So, like I said earlier, although we are not in the business of market research, um, we are in integrating the aspects of market research into our products. So our customers are looking to us to have that piece of it integrated. So for example, if we have a Salesforce automation app, which is part of our portfolio, that has an aspect of research integrated. And that's a good way for customers to shortcut that process and not have to go do it separately. Well, with SAP being enterprise-driven, right, and you had some questions about enterprise, it came up earlier, too, in our discussions, I think, yesterday, I'm, I'm losing track, but B2B yeah. and, and mobile, there's a lot of stuff happening. I know that, my, I've got a friend that's a salesman, and, and he got chastised the other day because they knew exactly where he was, and he wasn't where he should have been, right. right? So is that mobile research? Is, is that something you guys are into? I, I, that hinges on a little bit of privacy issues right there, you know, tracking where your salespeople are. Um, but research, when I say research integrated into a Salesforce automation app, I mean, for example, a salesperson can go and survey his customers. Uh, and that's part of the Salesforce automation app where he is tracking his opportunities, his quotations, his products, and everything. So that's what I mean when I say research as part of a salesperson's function. Mm -hmm. So giving them the stuff they need in the moment, wherever they are. Exactly where they are. Okay, so that, that leads to the, to the next, I guess, question, and that is, um, when you think about mobile, you know, what is it that comes to mind for you? Is it as a client with a challenge, and, and anyone can answer this one, but as a client, you have a challenge to, to connect with the customer and get their opinions or get their behavior, right? What are the biggest screw-ups and challenges you've had? And, and we learn by our mistakes, so share with me some of the mistakes you've made with being in the moment. <laughs> oh, that's easy. Uh, lots of them. Can you hear me? There you go. Um, lots of them. So, you know, especially when you were talking about advertising research, and, I, and this is from CARS, when we were looking, uh, we put the, the request to be in a survey in a banner position, right? Well, nobody had told the ad serving folks except to serve this ad so that when they got a new ad in place, boom, the survey came down, and so the results looked very different. Nobody communicated to anyone else, so we're thinking, wow, this was a really unusual study in looking at all this information. The fact of the matter is, nobody talked to each other. So, you know, I think because they're new systems, and, you know, another one is iOS changes constantly. So the app that worked very well for collecting survey data, all of a sudden, you can't track it. And I think in Android is even worse, right? Because there's, it's not really a common platform. So I think those things are going to be, you know, just very difficult going forward. Mm -hmm. Other screw ups. <laughs> I, I think that's no. I, I, I think one of them is that whole sense of, especially if you're doing app based, is the reality is you got to get to work on the user's device, and it's it's you know Android. I don't know how many flavors there are now, 700 permutations or something like that. So I mean, you, you got to you're creating in an ecosystem that even the best app developers have trouble staying current in. Well, and, and I think, you know, building on the app thing, uh, something that, that I see a lot is that most of the mobile app developers uh, have been coached by the, the venture capital community uh, that the way you're supposed to develop is you create something that's embarrassingly rudimentary. They call it a minimum viable product, and you put it out in the marketplace and you start getting reactions from customers. And that's how websites have worked traditionally for years. And so you see a lot of, of app developers doing this. And by the way, if you are commissioning an app to be made for you, they're probably going to try to do that. They'll say, oh, let's do the minimum viable product and start getting feedback. Yeah, yeah, MVP. So here's what happens when you do that with a mobile application. You put that app out in the, the app store, and people review it. And because it's a minimum viable product, in other words, it's embarrassingly simple, they give it bad reviews. And as a result, it gets a bad reputation. So later on, when you've fixed it, nobody will come back to it and look at it. 
Um, so actually, you need to completely flip it around for, for mobile development. You've got to polish the thing and make it as good as possible before you get it out there. Doesn't mean it has to do everything perfectly, but it's better to have it do one thing perfectly than to have it do five things in a really bad way. But nobody's used to designing that way. So I'm seeing companies get led astray by the folks who are doing mobile development for them because they just, they, they think they're still working on the web and, and they're not and they don't understand it. I, I think just dovetailing on it is just a crappy experience within the app. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially the, the mobile users are used to slick apps, ways of working, and your survey experience has to, has to hold up to that or people just go, forget it. It's not up to par with an app experience. It's a, you, you, that's what you're being evaluated against, it's not a survey experience, an app experience. And they won't be back. I agree with the iterative approach, I think, which is what you're suggesting, that you start with a good foundation and then you build on it versus the other way, which is you know, start the crappy starting point. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I think that's the way to go. The, uh, the, the other thing, I mean, uh, uh, on the theme that everyone's doing it, right? I've had two conversations with clients just this week. One of them was with Marriott and one of them was with Microsoft. But Microsoft just did a study the guy, and we actually did this on a webinar for ARF, and he said, he just did a study, it was in like 20 countries, in 90 stores on pad and paper. Now this is Microsoft. And he says, no one has talked to me about doing mobile research at all. And he's got everyone in the world calling on him. If, if why, what's going on with that? And Marriott, they just want to know, should I use a 10 point skill, a five point skill, or what, on mobile? These seem like, obvious questions to us, but I think that there's still a significant portion of big companies that don't get it. I think it sort of gets back to what I first said. As far as collection, they're not as interested in collection. They're looking for the data. But the other thing is cost, right? So you sit there and go, well, why wouldn't somebody be using a tablet for that, right? Why are they using pen and paper at all anymore? Well, there is a cost element to it, you know? And, and so, you know, I think, um, you know, you have to weigh, you're getting the data faster, so you probably don't have to clean it as much, so you don't have to input it, so you save some money on that side. But if I, all of a sudden now, as a research company, I have to buy, I don't know, how many tablets and they're outdated in a year, there, you know, there's some expense there. Mm -hmm. And I think the reality is that outside of the CP and retail industries, uh, market research is not as much of a structured function uh, as you would expect. Uh, so, for example, even with an SAP, we have our marketing department, which is really structured. They have a formal approach to market research. But there are people like me, so I'm part of the sales side of selling mobile technology. And I do my own ad hoc research any way I want. I don't necessarily engage a formal third-party market research agency. Um, I could use, uh, I, I don't necessarily, just because I sell mobile technology doesn't mean I use a mobile solution for market research. So I have done uh, email surveys, I have done phone interviews. So it's, it's, I think it works, it just works a little differently in the approach to market research in some other industries. So that's probably why the Microsoft case might have been such. But the pen and paper is a little extreme, I think. Yeah. Well, granted, I don't want to talk to my, I don't want my technician taking me under the hood when I take my car in, right, to do an oil change. I just want to just do it quick and get me out of here. So I understand that point, but it, it, I feel like maybe there's still some stuff to prove, like Andy's point about um, doing more surveys or more studies, research on research, making sure that it's, it, it is valid or, or different or d identifying scientifically what it is. What are your thoughts about that? Is, are there some holes, some gaps that we need to fill for clients so that they'll embrace this more? No? Anyone? <laughs> Bueller? <laughs> no, not beyond what you normally would do. It's, 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 it's you know, the, 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 the validity of the research comes down to, you know, right recruit, right, experience, right survey, right way of handling the data. And, and I just see it as, you know, your consumer has moved to mobile. So you need to be moving with them. So, you know, this whole thing of barrier, I, I struggle with it. So, <laughs> no barriers right now? I mean... No, I, I, you know, I, I guess I, I, when I used to, 
when I was at Cars and Tribune before that and did a lot of advertising, right? Well, you'd sort of, they want to know, what about mobile advertising? Well, in some ways, it's like internet advertising. It's like television advertising. You've got the four principles of marketing, and you need to follow those just as well. Now, there's form and for function, but to, I think your point was very well taken. It is less about this ideology of mobile research and more of a collection method. Absolutely. And is it better or worse than what you were doing before? If it's better, then, then where's the barrier? Maybe it's cost, maybe it's your consumer. I thought a very interesting point she made to, uh, right before this was that just because someone has a smartphone doesn't mean they're your target. Just because they have a smartphone doesn't mean they're smart <laughs> about their phone, right? Because I think this year is the year, the, the year of the dumb, dumb smartphone because you can't buy a non-smartphone and people don't know how to use it. So, you know, that I think is a very good assumption. And ha so is that a barrier? It could be if your, if your target market won't know how to use the technology. So I think it's the same kind of barriers that you've had in research before. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess, I'm just curious, how many of you have actually participated in research studies on your mobile device of some type? We heard the confession about how someone's signed up on all these panels or whatever, but. I, I try to actually log on to a variety of platforms, and you can't unless you have user ID or whatever you're assigned this stuff, so you can't even test drive it. Have you, you used any other ma mobile platforms out there for research? I've scanned QR codes and then, you know, done a survey from that. Uh -huh. It seemed to work pretty well, um, you know, if the light is right and if your QR code reader reads, you know. <laughs> so, I, I, again, I think it gets down to... Um, when I think about it, if you think back 15 years ago with the internet, there were those issues too, right? How do you do a skip pattern? They're going to see the question. Remember, we all were all worried about some of those things, and I think um, some of that will soften itself, and some will be hard forever. Yeah, I don't do a survey online anymore. I mean, because usually if, I'm, if I decide to do it, it's in that moment when I'm like, all right, I have some downtime. I'm just going to flip through it either on my phone or on my, my iPad and, and do it then. I'm, I'm just not going to be when I, it's very rarely, I guess I don't pull up my keyboard that much anymore outside of work. You know, it's, it's kind of like, so by nature, and I go through them and the experiences are vast and broad. Some are good and some are, you know, pretty weak. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, as a consumer of mobile surveys, I think the best ones are those that are contextual. So if I've, used, if I've just used the United or the Lufthansa mobile app, and up pops, as soon as I print my boarding pass or I open my boarding pass, up pops two questions. What did you think about the app? And what, how was your experience? Or how was your flight? Right there. And I think that's probably the best execution of a survey on a mobile device. If you were to send me something that pops up and had 20 questions in it, chances are I don't have the time to go through that thought process of answering a 20-question survey. Mm -hmm. So you have participated. Um, it, it, just a show of hands, how many of you have ever participated in a, someone else's survey on, online, on a mobile device? It's about half, it looks like it. What do you think? Yeah, half? Think Interesting. Yeah, uh, so I, I guess that brings me to the next one here, and that is how do we get through the, uh, uh, the emotional affinity that people have with their devices and, 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 and gain that trust even more to, to get the participation. I, I, you know, judge, from somebody who ran websites, I think it has the same thing with a website, right? It's um, you ask permission. Mm -hmm. You ask permission. And if it's not permission-based, it's going to be a problem, right? Um, because it is such a personal medium and I think that's where the privacy issues are going to come into play is because they do consider it spam then. So, you know, having it pop up and say, will you take this survey? Yes, that's fine. Not letting me get to the next page without doing that, not so great. You that know, takeover I, strategy. Yeah, the takeover strategy, all of a sudden that, that taints <laughs> your brand. Uh -huh. And that's, that's a whole lot more expensive than not getting the right data. I also think it's, it is a personal device, so stuff like, are you going to do it through a skin web experience where you're just sending them through to the mobile web, or are you asking somebody to actually download an app to your phone? To me, it's a much bigger commitment to put something on that real estate. Mm -hmm. You know, something that, that 
stands out across a lot of successful things in mobile is just instant utility. Um, if, it's, if it's a game, entertain the person from the very start. If it's some sort of productivity tool, uh, give them some level of productivity from the very beginning. The more setup that's involved, uh, the more that people have to go through before they, they start feeling like they're making progress, the more likely they are to drop out in incredibly short attention spans. So it's not, it's not necessarily emotional affinity. It's not that they have to love you, but they have to feel like they're getting something done really quickly. And I think that applies as much to doing a research survey with somebody as it does to, uh, to trying to entertain them in an app or something like that. We do a lot of social graphs too, just kind of those instantaneous rewards. Is how does your response fit in the context of you know, a bigger, broader audience that's, mm -hmm. that's taking it? Yeah, I think this, this is uh, sort of evidence of the emotional affinity. Uh, we have a customer in Canada who's a rail uh, transit authority. And they found that 50, almost 50% 50 of their riders actually went in and opted in their information and put in their, their profile information, mm -hmm. and which then became available to the, the, both the rail authority as well as the ecosystem around it, which was all the retailers and the coffee shops and all of them. So it, I think it shows the affinity they have, consumers have for mobile devices. If someone sent me the same thing on an online or an email, chances are it's like 10, 20% at the most. Uh, kind of response. So I think it goes to show the affinity that they have towards mobile devices in general. And that leads me to another uh, avenue of thought. It, it, I've done a couple of these conferences and we've heard a lot about the blending of marketing and research. So when you're trying to sell someone something, you can also ask a question right. or vice versa. So more and more companies that are not research companies I can name off a few, Foursquare, Shopkick, Facebook, et cetera, are now in the business of asking questions in context, especially Foursquare and Shopkick. Um, what are your thoughts about that kind of activity happening within the marketing world, research happening on top of, say, a Marriott application? If they had an application, how was your experience today? Um, hi, just the other day, Holiday Inn had a thing about take a photo, uh, and please share with everyone. Okay, so what about the companies doing that? Is there any fear you have, any thought you have? Is that a barrier or an opportunity? Yeah, I, I can continue the thought on the rail authority in Canada, and, mm -hmm. and that's a, it's a public, it's, it's STM, it's the Montreal Authority, they have an app on the iStore, uh, iTunes Store, and uh, they employ that thing of where they use the profile information to basically offer, make real-time offers to consumers or to their riders. Uh, so they integrate the information they collect, they understand the consumer, they use back-end information from their CRM and the point-of-sale systems. Uh, they share that information with their ecosystem and they co-market. Uh, they, they allow their retailers along the path of the network to make offers to these riders as, as they take their morning train to work. Um, and in the process, they collect information on, did you enjoy your ride today? Is there anything we can improve in our service? Mm -hmm. um, so that's actually something where they are taking it one level beyond and taking, taking uh, the whole concept of marketing and market research to their ecosystem. And in the, in the process, the, the, their, the retailers around use this uh, pilot group, if you will, to test market their offers, which they could potentially offer to a wider audience. I mean, it, they're not limited to the riders uh, on the train. But they use the, this group to essentially test market and pilot their own offers. And they have that time to kill on the train, too, right. I guess, right? Right. So they're co constantly checking their phone to see, hey, I got 10% off uh, from Starbucks. Or in the evening, it could be 10% off um, from a, the local florist or whatever. Very so. yeah, fascinating. Fascinating. Yes. You know, I, I think it's not just a matter of, of mixing the research in with the marketing. I think it's a matter of... of collecting feedback and information throughout everything that you do. And, and, and this isn't just mobile, this is anything that's being delivered electronically. One of my favorite examples of this is if, if you use Skype for, uh, for doing conference calls with people. At the end of the call, Skype pops up a little dialogue saying, how was the call quality? And you've got little buttons that you can use to rate it. Now, I don't like the way they follow up afterwards, because if you say that you had a problem with it, all they do is they give you some generic things that basically boil down to, well, your internet connection must suck. It's not our fault. <laughs> but, but, you know, if, if it is an opportunity where if they gave you a richer interaction, all of a sudden you'd be bonding with these guys in the course of using the product, plus you'd be giving them useful feedback, plus they'd be helping you use the product. I mean, what a marvelous opportunity. And most companies that do interactions online, whether, whether it's mobile or, or the, the, the fixed line web, 
um, they don't take advantage of that nearly as much as they could and should. I think it should be built in throughout. I think the other thing, we, do, we have alliances with a lot of publishers, social sites, and, and it's very effective at finding certain target groups. So I can, I can define different groups I want to understand, and I can do it at scale, and I can do it quickly. So I can get real-time numbers at scale I could never do. Stuff like ad effectiveness, I can, I can do stuff in a matter of 24 hours. It used to be two or three weeks. By, by, you know, it's a different methodology. It's, it's one, two question surveying, and we've got to stitch it together. But you can't do that any other way. Hmm. Um, I want to see if anyone has any questions out here. So we're at the five minute mark. Uh, does anyone here have any questions that they would like to uh, ask our esteemed panel? Yes? No? That was just an auctioning. <laughs> Don't move. <laughs> None? I guess you guys want some coffee then. Or like, you know, so. Or some well, ice well, cream. What's keeping them from doing bubble? Yeah, yeah. Well, what's, yeah, there's several of you that are here that are maybe not doing it, right? Or, you know, or your company. You know, maybe, yeah. Maybe, maybe. Is everyone here doing mobile research, or are you here to figure it out? Let me see. I'm here to figure it out. We're not doing it. That's quite sizable, actually. Very interesting. Um, any closing thoughts you have on reaching these people who are here to figure it out and help them figure it out? I've just you know, listened to a lot of folks over the last two days, and one thought I wanted to leave was uh, a big revolution that's taking place in the mobile world in general is the Internet of Things, right? Mobile to mobile, machine to machine, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think in the context of market research, I think there's a lot of potential. I did not hear much of it in the last couple of days. Um, I think something for us to think about in terms of how that could uh, pair out in terms of giving us research, in-home surveys, you know, all the different, imagine uh, if you had a, a coffee machine that would talk back to you and tell you exactly how the consumer is using it. So everywhere. Um, where, I think whatever you Bob wear, Warren whatever you use. Phone. Yeah. Yeah, the everywhere. Right. <laughs> Just two thoughts. One is find good mobile partners because, you know, they, you, you can't know everything and you got people with the expertise, especially if it's a big technology quotient. I think the one I haven't heard a lot about is privacy and what it means when we're moving to a much more personalized device along with a lot more capabilities where I can track you and I can link data and, and back to you much closer than ever before. I, I just think it's yep. be practical, especially if you're going to start. So if your first foray, foray into finding the satisfaction of your mobile website probably should be done on mobile. Right, and, and so, you know, to some extent, I think we try to overthink things sometimes and start small, start easy, um, because we're all going to make mistakes. There's no perfect solution out there, so just start small, start easy. Mm -hmm. You're good? All right, is everyone else, everyone else good? All right, no questions? Very good. <laughs> Call the coffee. Thank you very much.